Hello everybody, today is July 25th, 2011. The results are in from the recent Government Accountability Office on the recent uh, 250 plus page audit that they just did of the, of the Federal Reserve. You're not going to believe what they discovered. This is the first audit to this degree that has been ever done in the 100 year history. And if, if what you hear doesn't blow you away, then maybe the fact that I'm the first person you hear this from <laughs> should be totally shocking. Because this should be non-stop every night. This is like four days ago this came to light. Every night this should be on the news. This should be being discussed. Everything's about the debt ceiling. Everything's about going further into debt to fix our problems. Well, we have a much bigger problem with the Federal Reserve, the private corporation that prints our money. It came to light that they provided secret loans to American banks, corporations, and foreign banks of $16 trillion between December 2007 and June 2010. They provided these loans. This happened, I happened to learn about this right at a time when I'm rereading Ron Paul's book that came out a couple of years ago, um, it just you know reassures everything that Mr. Paul's talking about. I wanted to talk real quickly. I don't know if you can see this. In the beginning, as uh, Ron Paul's setting up the introduction about the Fed, he talks about the adjusted monetary base, and at this time the adjusted monetary base was uh, 1.7 trillion dollars. It had doubled after the 08 crisis. The, um, the monetary base had doubled and I wanted to read real quick uh, uh, something here that uh, Mr. Paul said. He said this was the Bernanke printing press at work. If you and I did anything similar, we'd be called counterfeiters and sent away for a lifetime in prison. We could be scorned and hated by everyone as scam artists and racketeers. But when the Fed does it, complete with a scientific gloss, it is seen as a perfectly legal and responsible conduct of monetary policy. This new money now sits as reserves in bank vaults awaiting a safe environment for lending and borrowing. Well, that was in 2009. I'm going to let you in to see now where we're currently at. This is what the graph looks like now. This is where it was when Ron Paul wrote his book and you know he, he couldn't believe this how it just shot straight up. You know the monetary base doubled. All the base money, the um, you know the readily available money. This isn't like CDs or or um, all the money held at financial institutions. This is the readily available money. And then the money supply is based off of, of, uh, off of this. You know, the, the banks can loan this out 10 times. I think the current money supply is around 14 trillion, which actually in 2008 was 14 trillion. It dipped, went down a few trillion as everything was deleveraging and people you know, were losing their homes and everything and money was being wiped out. That's why they had to fund all these banks. And then the derivatives started popping and just going crazy. So they had to start funding the banks. Well, this here, this here is QE1, and then this here is QE2. And um, it's almost $2.8 trillion. So this has actually almost doubled again since Ron Paul wrote his book and he couldn't believe, you know, this, this, uh, this rise we had here. So something really important with this is we haven't seen the inflation that you would expect from a graph like this. Now, the reason being is this graph here. This graph is the excess reserves of depository institutions. If you notice this line here, that's 1960, pretty much, you know, they're only holding what they have to at the Federal Reserve. Now, all of a sudden, they're holding like a million and a half 
trillion dollars. The banks are in excess reserves. And part of what makes this you know, appe appealing to the banks is that they're now getting interest on this. They're getting this money at almost 0% interest, maybe a quarter of a percent. And then by holding it at the Fed, they're getting 3 to 4% off of this. So this money's not even being lended. The justification for the TARP, remember that Troubled Asset Relief Program? Well, that was supposed to be given to the banks so that they would start lending because, you know, they weren't lending out. Well, <laughs> I don't see that happening. <laughs> Until interest rates go up, there's going to be no initiative for them to start lending. So this is a totally incredible graph. You can just see we're totally unprecedented times. You know, this is what's happening here. What I also wanted to talk about was the $16 trillion that was dealt out. I wanted to uh, touch on, you know, where that money went. You know, the TARP was supposed to be $800 billion supposed to be given to the banks. Well, what you're going to see here is Goldman Sachs received $800 billion to themselves. Just that one institution, just the one bank. So that money, you know, lending froze up when they actually started TARP. I was reading about how when Lehman collapsed, there was still lending happening. And then when they when they did the, um, you know, when they started handing out the cash and then started giving them ways of getting three, four percent off of, you know, almost free money, you know, then they stopped loaning altogether. That's an incredible amount, $1.5 trillion being held in reserves at the Fed. So the Fed's walking around like some guy who's seeding his his grass, you know, trying to fill in the grass with some seeds. They're just tossing money around all over the place. I mean, that's the best metaphor that comes to mind. But $16 trillion, I mean, that's more than the GDP of the United States in one year. And they're just tossing this out. They're giving it to foreign banks. You know, something really incredible. I got to point this out here. Um, let me find the note. There was a lot of conflict of interest that was happening with people, your board members of the Fed. They had a lot of money in these institutions. So they started handing out waivers so that when they hand this money out to the institution, you know, they could wipe out the um, conflict of interest. Totally incredible. Here's an example. The CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase served on the New York Fed's board. Hmm. At the same time that his bank received more than $390 billion. Oh, isn't that nice? in financial assistance from the Fed. Moreover, J.P. Morgan Chase served as one of the clearing banks for the Fed's emergency lending programs. I mean, that's just totally incredible. And what I can't figure out is where this shows up in the data. I don't see the 16 trillion. I'm, this isn't just, I don't believe it's just 16 trillion that was handed over and you know, it's still there. It's created out of thin air anyhow. It's just computer entries being shot across. But I believe that some of it was paid back and that was loaned out. So maybe in total it's only half that amount. Maybe it's only eight trillion, you know, because eight was given back over the three years. None of that's covered. I'm gonna put a link below of the actual audit and I can also link up these um these St. Louis Fed graphs, if anyone's interested in those, you just go to the um, stlouisfed.org. All the information is there. It's a great site. You can see these parabolic, just shoot straight up type moves that, you know, the Fed has just totally just gone crazy, printing money out of nothing. It's almost like a living dreamland. You know, what's been going on is totally unbelievable. Here you go. If I already said, if, if you if this isn't enough to get you to get some physical bullion, if you don't already have it, I don't know what is. You got a Federal Reserve private corporation that prints our money, and then we have to pay it all back with interest. That's what this is all about. You know, that's what this is about. And this, the reason this needs to happen is because of what's happening, what just happened in the past three years. Two point five trillion to Citigroup. Two point. 2.04 trillion to Morgan Stanley, 1.95 trillion to Merrill Lynch, 1.34 trillion to Bank of America, 
868 billion to Barclays. Barclays, 853 billion to Bear Stearns, 814 billion to Goldman Sachs, 541 billion to the Royal Bank of Scotland, 391 billion to JP Morgan Chase. Deutsche Bank got 354 billion. UPS in Switzerland got 287 billion. Credit Suisse in Switzerland got 262 billion. Lehman Brothers got 183 billion. Bank of Scotland, UK, 181 billion. I mean, the list just goes on. Now I'm going to attach. Um, let's see. If you're interested in, in this information, it's on page 131 of the audit that I'm going to attach in the more info section below. So this is totally incredible. Uh, I hope I covered it. I covered it to the best of my knowledge. Um, and what really gets me is if you're hearing this from me for the first time, that just should blow you back more than anything. I mean, it should and it shouldn't. I mean, this should be headline news, should be blasted, you know, on every channel as you're flipping through the news channels. It should be everywhere. I haven't seen it. Um, maybe it's been on. Let me know if you've seen this on, if you watch, tel I don't really watch television. Let me know if you watch television, if you've seen this on the news. Um, you know, it, it, in retrospect, it's not that incredible because the same people that run the news outlets and that own them are the same ones that own the Fed. So it actually makes sense if you really think about it. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, seven weeks to default. We'll have to see. I'm still holding to what I always thought. We're going to come to some type of an agreement here. I'm guessing. Um, they're going to hammer it out by Thursday night. That's my guess. Um, we'll have to see. I really don't think we're going to default. I could be wrong on that. That's my guess. Um, I just don't see them letting it happen. The market would... I believe the market would really tank if we default, get downgraded on the debt. There's a lot of things that are going to happen, You know, start a domino effect. I believe they're going to come to some type of agreement. My guess is by Thursday night. But uh, anyway, that's it for now.